everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to show you how to make your own DIY board and batten wall treatment. Welcome back to my channel again today. Thank you so much for popping in. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own DIY board and batten wall feature. You may have seen this style of wall treatment in my recent dining room makeover. I did this for the bottom two thirds of the wall and I left the top third in the color that the room was before. And I think it added so much interest and detail to that space. I also did this treatment to my fireplace wall in my living room and I think it just gives the room so much more interest. I think this board and batten style just really suits the traditional look of our home. And I wanna show you how to do this yourself today. Traditionally, board and batten has a board and then it has the batten which is the vertical strips on the wall what I do is kind of a cheaters method where I just paint my wall and then I just put the vertical strips of trim over top to give my wall that board and batten look all you need to do this treatment on your walls is to know how to use a couple of different power tools I'm gonna to show you how I use them today now I think my living room looks so much more interesting with this added detail to the wall. I painted the top third of my fireplace wall this really beautiful charcoal color. I popped some Duraflame logs into my fireplace and now my room looks extra cozy and extra interesting. Let me show you how to make this DIY board and batten feature wall. Let's get started. I have DIY'd a couple of board and batten walls in the past, like a hook wall and my bathroom walls, so I've been able to pick up on a few tricks to make these look really professional. First of all, decide on how high you want your board and batten trim feature wall to be. For our fireplace wall, I decided it would look nice to have the white board and batten go two thirds up the wall, so on our nine foot walls, that's six feet high. This is also the height I made the board and batten feature in our dining room makeover. Next, decide how far apart do you want your battens to be. I like mine to be more than a foot apart, but no less than 18 inches apart. This is really up to you. Then measure and mark where your trim placement on your wall, have a look at it, and move the marks as necessary. I think it's important to plan your wall first and draw it out on paper or on your computer and see how it looks. In our case, I was working with the two transom with the windows on either side of the fireplace, plus one wall is a little bit longer than the other. It took me a little bit of planning to decide how I wanted our wall to look. For our board and batten trim, I decided to use baseboard trim, the same baseboard trim that we used on our baseboards, and then use a router to curve the bottom edge of the baseboard. That way I didn't have to do anything fancy to join the vertical boards to my current baseboard. The thickness of the trim matches. There are things you can do if your battens are thicker than your baseboard and I'll try to link to some options in the description box below. The next step is to put one coat of paint on your wall in the color of your board and batten trim and roughly where you want it to be installed. This helps you have at least one coat of paint down before you start your trim work and it really makes it easier to paint afterwards. For my board and batten color, I used Bear's Whisper White and this paint was provided to me for a blog post I did on my blog. I also decided to go a little dramatic for the top third of the fireplace wall and I painted it in Bear's Shades On, which is a really nice rich charcoal color. Next, measure and cut your horizontal trim boards with a cross-cut saw and install them carefully on the wall with a finishing nail gun. You can use a stud finder to nail the trim into the studs in your wall. I used a measuring tape and a level to ensure my trim was straight on the wall. I decided to have two horizontal pieces of trim for my board and batten, but I've also done walls with just one. And again, this is really up to you and how you want your board and batten feature to look. Next, measure and cut your vertical battens. Install them on the wall with a finishing nailer and a little construction glue because they probably won't be nailed into the studs. Then fill in all the nail holes and joins with wood filler. I've grown to like this method better for nail holes and joins than caulking because it doesn't tend to shrink. I do however use caulking to fill and smooth where the trim meets the wall and I'm going to leave a link in the description box below to my method on using caulking. 
Once the wood filler and caulking is dry, sand out any rough spots, and then finally paint everything with one or two coats of paint, depending on the color and the type of paint that you're using. I also decided to add one final piece of one by two inch trim to the top of my board and batten, which you can see here in the final look. I think that gives it just a little bit more detail. Thank you guys so much for watching my video today. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about this tutorial or what you think of this board and batten wall look. Please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to be the first to hear my DIY and decor ideas. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again next time. Bye.